And what brings you here today, sir? Well, Julius, I, I just feel it's an injustice, and I, I'm pretty sure I know where this is going. The guy is only a reporter. I'm not a reporter, so I'm not covering any industry here. I woke up this morning, had to come here. I'm working tomorrow. It's my day off. And I just feel that this guy is going to America to die, and I just think that's inhumane. It's obscene. They'll do one of two things. They'll either not render a decision for like weeks or months to let him rot there, yep. or they might like let him appeal on one point that ultimately he won't win on. There's a lot of incentive to drag it out, the elections, and then also, as Neil Smelzik says, it's about destroying him. What this process is really about is destroying him. And you know, that's what they've done for almost five years now in Belmarsh. And then, uh, you know, with the seven years, yeah. the, so that's my guess. Do you think it's more likely they'll keep him there just rotting in prison yeah, yeah. here or the United States until people forget about him? I think the CIA him? wants him eventually. Yeah. 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 They want to make him pay. And you just had the whistleblower who gave the documents for Vault 7 just got 40 years. They want to make him pay, but they'll make him suffer first. Do you think there's anybody in the higher ups of government in either of these countries that would be willing to stick out their necks for no. these guys? No. Nobody. Nobody that you know. Absolute yeah. pieces of shit. Yep. And they've shown it. Yeah. This whole judicial process is farcical from the beginning. Yeah. They've trampling over their own most basic judicial norms. Just ignored them. Yeah. How's it going in there, Gabriel? Yeah, getting there. Getting, getting there. there. Yeah, yeah. You feel optimistic? No. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. This has been an intensely political matter from day one. I understand uh, you and a few of your colleagues have written to James Cleverly asking for a full review of Julian Assange's health. Have you had a reply? No. No reply at all? No reply at all. because I think this the more people here the better and it needs more traction because honestly I didn't even know this was happening until a few days ago when a friend mentioned it and I didn't even know the whole story behind Julian Assange and I think that's appealing appalling sorry <laughs> appalling and I think that's mainly because no one's mentioned it and not enough people have paid attention to what's going on so I'm here to make sure more people know about it and there's more and more people showing up for Julian. I came today because I was astounded that I had very little knowledge of what happened in the last five years concerning this case, when to me it was something that was historical, when it's incredibly current, and when you look into the most basic things of it, it's so clear that it's um, something that is completely illegal and makes no sense when you think that we should have a free press. Um, this goes in direct opposition to that. Will you be joining us for the march? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I think very necessary to show direct presence in front of the government um, that doesn't seem to be present at all, that the people actually care about this and the people want change for these kinds of situations. So yeah, I'm definitely yeah. Fantastic. Okay, now, is that a French accent I'm getting it is. there? Okay, so it there's is. a fine tradition of uh, active resistance in France, isn't it? Yeah. There is, I'm trying to perpetrate it here, but yeah, it's very much, um, I can't look at a case like this and sit at home. You have to be here and you have to show up and show that you care. And that's very core cool to my values, so that's also why I'm here. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you at the House of Parliament. Yes. See you. <laughs>